What's up my comic comrades? One of the biggest comic titles dropping this year is Flashpoint Beyond, where DC writer megastar Jeff Johns has returned to give us a sequel to his iconic Flashpoint storyline. The Zero issue of the bi-weekly miniseries released last week, so today we're gonna break open the first issue of Flashpoint Beyond, which once again puts Thomas Wayne Batman front and center. We've been excited for the series to drop since it was announced, and I have to tell you, after reading the first issue, it definitely has me excited for where it's going. It seems like Johns is going very meta with it and sort of taking jabs at what DC did with the continuity of his Batman, Thomas Wayne, and just DC in general after he left, which has been one of my biggest gripes since his Doomsday Clock story. I really felt like John set DC up nicely going into the future, and they immediately dismantled it and returned to reboots and more crisis events. Not sure why it happened, but it happened. Anyway, I'm done with my mini vent. Now let's dive into Flashpoint issue zero and see what's going on. starts off with Batman. Which Batman, you ask? Well, I'm assuming Prime Earth Batman, but who really knows anymore? Anyway, Batman is staring at a chalkboard in some ransacked, rundown, old subterranean-looking office. The chalkboard says 5G averted, which is obviously a plan the whole DC 5G initiative that almost was, but got turned into Future State because of lots of different reasons, from the Warner merger, sales, pandemic, yada, yada, yada. The chalkboard also says Fall of the Justice League, Rise of, with Batman standing in front of the rest of the sentence, so we can't see. The board also says, why is Deathstroke not acting like Deathstroke. Imposter? Anyway, as Batman continues to walk around, he finds things like notes on the ground that say Divine Continuum, with a diagram that says Omniverse, Multiverse, Hypertime, Dark Multiverse, Metaverse, The Sphere of Gods. So clearly we're dealing with more reality warping continuity changing events within the story. Anyway, Batman then says, we found it, as he walks into a huge vault. Voices then say, yeah, Batman, but if we found it, someone else will too. And if the maniacs who hang out here catch any of us, we're screwed. Batman then says, they won't. The Time Masters have their own problems right now. They'll never know we were here. As we see the people that Batman are talking with is Mime and Marionette, original Watchmen characters created for the Doomsday Clock story by Jeff Johns. Marionette then points Batman to Janie Slater's watch, which is right next to a snow globe. If you don't know, Janie Slater is Dr. Manhattan's former girlfriend. Anyway, Batman takes the snow globe saying, I shouldn't do this. I know that, but I am. He then leaves the vault telling Marionette, we're done. You have a little girl to get back to, don't you? Congratulations, by the way. And before Batman leaves, he sees another chalkboard that says Thomas Wayne will die, which he erases before leaving. We then get a huge splash page that recaps Flashpoint for us, which I'll read to you guys in case you need a refresher or you've never read that story. It says the following. When Barry Allen traveled back in time to save his mother's life, he changed reality into what became known as the Flashpoint. In this new timeline, Bruce Wayne was murdered in Crime Alley instead of his parents. His father Thomas became a violent and angry Batman, and his mother Martha went mad with grief, taking on the twisted identity of the Joker. Barry Allen sought out Thomas Wayne and convinced this Batman to help him change reality back. In doing so, Thomas would save his son. They succeeded, didn't they? And with this, Flashpoint Beyond kicks off with the Clockwork Killer prologue. Now, before diving straight into the Flashpoint reality, I do want to mention the last time we saw Flashpoint Batman, or Thomas Wayne Batman, was in Justice League Incarnate Issue 4, when Darkseid hit him with the Omega Sanction. And now here, in the Zero issue of Flashpoint Beyond, it starts with Thomas Wayne being woken up by the Penguin back in his Flashpoint reality. Oswald Cobblepot, who works for Wayne in this reality, is waking him up, basically saying, you have a meeting with Judge Dent, and he's charging you with murder if you don't do what he asks. At this point, Dent comes charging into Thomas Wayne's office with two police officers saying, why hasn't he gone to Arkham to visit my wife like I asked Cobblepot? I told you she won't talk to anyone but him. Gilda has become obsessed with Martha. Thomas echoes Martha. Dent says, your late wife, the Joker. Batman may have saved our daughter from that lunatic, but the trauma Martha put her through, getting shot, watching Commissioner Gordon die, even with Martha dead, Debbie was haunted by that awful laughter. Thomas then says to himself, no, this isn't right. Martha never became the Joker. Barry changed it all back. But Dent continues to press Thomas saying, your vengeful actions drove Martha mad. You murdered Joe Chill. I can prove it. I will prove it if you don't help Gilda regain her sanity. I won't fail my wife like you failed yours. At this point, Wayne gets up and leaves saying to himself, this is wrong. As he gets into the elevator, continuing to think, Barry changed it back. I remember I was ripped out of time by the reverse flash. Dawn turned me into a living paradox that shouldn't exist. Yet I did. I tried to force Bruce to quit, but I was cruel and I was wrong. I realized the world needed my son. That he made the Batman into something good, unlike me. I remember Darkseid, his eyes glowing. I should be dead. And Bruce should be alive, but he's buried right here with Martha. As we 
we see him visit their graves. He continues to say to himself, the first thing I do is break into Star Labs. I've learned enough about the universe beyond this one to know that this could be an alternate world mimicking mine. But the vibrational frequencies I've registered tell me Darkseid didn't send me to some parallel Earth. I think he was trying to destroy me, but I'm home. This is reality, so what the hell is going on? So someone is messing with Thomas Wayne in the Flashpoint timeline, but apparently it's not Darkseid. Also, I love the kind of passive aggressive jab that Johns takes via Thomas Wayne on Tom King's Batman run when Thomas teamed up with Bane and did a bunch of horrible stuff to force Bruce to quit being Batman. Only when Thomas Wayne was written by other people like Josh Williamson, they made Thomas be like, I was wrong, I shouldn't have done that. And Jeff Johns is adding on to that as he's like, yeah, that was out of character, which he definitely should know as he's one of the co-creators of Thomas Wayne Batman. Anyway, as Thomas is staring at Bruce and Martha's grave, we see Martha Wayne Joker talking to him in his head, saying, you thought you saved our son. No, Thomas, it was a dream, that's all. A wonderful little dream. I gotta say, it's nice to see Martha Wayne Joker again. I wish we got more stories of her, but hey, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? We then see the news talking about the war between the Amazons and the Atlanteans, a war which the Atlanteans won, meaning it's only a matter of time before Aquaman brings his army to American shores. We also see that somehow Cyborg and Abin Sur have been brought back to life in this reality as they died in the original Flashpoint story. We also see that America is fearing Flashpoint Superman as he's free from his bunker and America and the rest of the world think it's only a matter of time before the rest of the Kryptonians come to Earth and help Superman invade and conquer Earth. As the news anchor says, we must prepare for a Kryptonian invasion, because I don't believe his planet blew up like some have claimed. We then see Thomas in his Batcave looking up the address of Barry Allen, but he hears something and turns around and sees that someone wrote Everything Matters on his chalkboard. He then asks, who wrote that? Is that you, Thon? Are you back? Is this revenge for me putting a sword through your spine? I'll do it again. Everything matters? No. Not here. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. He then punches the chalkboard, breaking it. If you guys didn't pick up on it, the quote, everything matters, isn't just a random phrase written on his chalkboard. No. Everything Matters was a slogan during Scott Snyder's Crisis event, Death Metal, where by the end of it, the whole point of it was that all continuity matters. Everything matters. But here, Thomas Wayne thinks that's complete and utter bullcrap. So much so that he punches the chalkboard that says it, shattering it. I can't help but think this is Jeff John's cryptic yet passive aggressive way of saying through Thomas Wayne Batman, why did they mess with the continuity I reestablished in Doomsday Clock and DC Rebirth immediately after? Something I personally have been pondering myself. So now he's like, oh, everything matters, huh? No, nothing matters, evidently. At least this is my takeaway from this. Thomas says to himself, I'll change it and save Bruce. I'll change it all back and I'll kill whoever did this. Trying to fix the Flashpoint timeline yet again. We're then briefly taken to Central City, where this world's Barry Allen is investigating the fourth victim of the Clockwork Killer. After investigating the body, he then proceeds back to his apartment where Thomas Wayne is waiting for him. Barry says, what the hell are you doing in here? Wait, you're Thomas Wayne. Thomas says, yes, yes, I'm Thomas Wayne. You remember me. Barry says, remember you? There isn't a person in America who doesn't know all about you, Dr. Wayne. Thomas replies, then you don't remember anything. Barry, what I'm about to tell you, I know how insane it's going to sound because you once told it to me. I'm the Batman. Barry replies, I told you I was the Batman? Thomas says, no, I I'm the Batman and you call yourself the Flash. Let me explain. Thomas then breaks down Barry's origin, how his mother was killed, his father was blamed for it and then imprisoned, and how Barry became the fastest man alive and broke the time barrier to travel back to the past to save his mother's life. He continues to say, you were like a bullet and all of history was a windshield you hit. The reverberations from your actions at that moment in time rippled backward and forward, reaching out to the people closest to you and changing their histories. People like Arthur and Diana, Clark Kent, Hal Jordan, my son, Bruce. The world was drowning in chaos because of what you did, but together you and I restored your powers and you changed it all back. But now, now someone's done it again. Someone's altered everything, and I need your help to save my son and the world. Clearly, Barry is confused and thinks Thomas is crazy and ultimately tells him, get the hell out of here, and that he's calling the station. So Thomas says, I can't wait for Barry Allen to believe me, as he hits him with a sedative in his neck. Thomas then tells himself, I'll have to do this slightly out of order, as he pulls a syringe out of Barry's neck and ties him up. He then brings Barry to the tallest building in Gotham City. Here he plans to recreate what he did to Barry Allen in Flashpoint that gave him his powers back. Barry now strapped into essentially an electric chair with chemical says, what the hell are you doing? Thomas says, proving I'm right. I was hoping we could talk this out and then we'd get your powers back so you could fix everything. But I'm not as convincing as you. Barry says, you have to stop this, Dr. Wayne. But Thomas tells him, Barry, you have a wife and children, a family, a legacy, even a museum, though you're embarrassed by all that attention. You taught me there was a better way, my son's way. He's a Batman that I'll never be. It's different when you lose a child. 
It can break you. It broke me forever. The rage, the guilt, the pain. I've done so many bad things, but it doesn't matter. You'll make sure of that. Barry says, if I'm hit with a bolt of lightning, I'll die. Thomas says with his hand on Barry's shoulder, no, Barry, you'll save everyone, including me. Soon, this will all be over. But as Thomas says that, a harpoon hits the chemicals connected to Barry. As he screams, get me out of here. Lightning then hits the device, frying Barry like an electric chair on crack, killing him, leaving him nothing but a melted, burnt corpse. Right after this, Cobblepot calls Thomas Wayne saying, Judge Dent and the police are on their way here right now. Selena says they're going to arrest you for the murder of Joe Chill. But we see the sniper who shot the chemicals also shot and blew up Dent's car, killing him with Dent's son yelling, Dad! Save me. Batman is able to save the kid from the car, but not Dent himself. The boy then tells Batman, there he goes. He shot those things right at the cops. Thomas then says to himself, he shot the harpoon, spilled the chemicals, corrupted the process. He killed Alan. Why? One of Aquaman's surface allies, an assassin. What's he doing in Gotham? Batman then captures the assassin, which is clearly an alternate version of Black Manta, or at least someone very similar. Batman violently interrogates him, saying, what do you know about Barry Allen? The man replies, Aquaman, he, he, he said he was going to use Barry Allen to change things. He said I had to kill him. Batman then says to himself, what? How would Aquaman know any of this? Batman then tells the dude, tell me everything you know, or the man then says, do whatever you want to be, Batman, because now that I've failed, my king, the Atlanteans, will only do worse when they find me. Batman says, you murdered the only man who could help me. The assassin says, I've murdered a lot of people. I could say it's in the name of Atlantis, but the truth is, I like it. I like to hurt people, men, women, and children. I like to watch them die. You see, we can be allies. We're the same. Everyone knows the Batman is a killer. You're like me. Batman says, shut up, but the assassin keeps pushing Thomas's buttons, saying he He's just like him, a cold-blooded killer. As Thomas says to himself, don't do it, Thomas. Be like Bruce. You learned how to be. Don't give in. Don't. But the assassin finally says, we're both monsters. I see it in you. It's like looking in a mirror. We can share stories of what we've done. Our greatest kills. Have you ever watched a child die? This causes Thomas to remember holding his son's lifeless body in Crime Alley as he brutally kills the assassin by smashing his head into the wall several times. It is extremely gory. Saying to himself, this won't matter nothing will. Then in the epilogue of the issue, we see that Bruce Wayne from the beginning of the issue has brought Janie Slater's watch and snow globe into the Batcave. We see someone off panel talking to Batman in the cave saying, hey Mr. Wayne, this isn't gonna end well for you or your dad. Batman says, I told you to go away. But the voice says, it's incredibly disruptive, you know. What you're doing could threaten everything. All of space and time. The Divine Continuum itself. As we see the Divine Continuum on our chart, breaking it down into the Omniverse, the Multiverse, the Dark Multiverse, the Meta Universe, the Sphere of Gods, Hypertime, Limbo, and the Vanishing Point. And it should also be noted that Divine Continuum stands for DC, as in DC Comics. Batman then says, considering the number of times I've saved the Divine Continuum, it owes me one. The voice then says, this is going to come back and haunt you. I'm not joshing. Batman says, if you could stop me, kid, you would have already done it. The boy then says, maybe you don't need to worry about me alone, but Dr. Hunter is going to be awfully sore when he finds out you broke into our lab. He's going to finally get us Time Masters back together. Dr. Smith, my sis, and even me, Corky Baxter. And Dr. Hunter is going to have us change your history. And I could already guess how, too. And boy, will it be something. So don't say I didn't warn you, Mr. Wayne. You just opened up a can of worms, and we're going to make you eat them. As we see him sitting on top of the Snyderverse Batmobile with the Keaton Batmobile behind it, which is dope. I was thoroughly shocked and pleased to see Baxter sitting on top of Ben Affleck's Batmobile. So cool seeing it in the comic books. Same with Keaton's, but we've seen it in the comics plenty of times before. Anyway, to say that Corky Baxter, Rip Hunter, and the rest of the Time Masters are not too pleased with Bruce would be an understatement. And something big is definitely coming, whether it's at the hands of Bruce or the Time Masters, big changes are on the way. But that wraps up things for Flashpoint Beyond Issue Zero. I think this story is off to a fantastic start. It's really cool how everything in Flashpoint was undone and all Thomas Wayne has to do is figure out how to fix it again. So I'm loving the start and can't wait to see where it goes. I also like all the meta commentary that Jeff Chons may or may not have purposely put into the dialogue of the comic. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for the rest of the series? Let us know in the comments. First up for the week of 420, we have Nightwing issue 91. Trying to save a city that's even more beyond saving than Gotham is no small task. And even someone like Nightwing needs a day off to relax with his best friend and to recharge. But when your best friend is Wally West, aka The Flash, a recharge might not end up being so relaxing. Next up, we have Batman Superman World's Finest issue 2. The Man of Steel and the Dark Knight have arrived at the compound of Niles Colder, the chief in charge of the strange band of misfits known as the Doom Patrol. But all is not as it seems. Here we have Power Rangers issue 18. The Omega Rangers take a big risk, splitting up after receiving separate distress calls from two distant planets, while Zack and Trini bring an unexpected guest back to safe haven after a battle. 
Now we have Transformers Beast Wars Annual 1. This collection of three stories centers on the characters we know and love from the IDW Transformers Beast Wars series, with some fun surprises and adventures. And finally, we have The Hulk Issue 6. The first arc of Donny Cates and Ryan Otley's mind-blowing Hulk saga will reach its epic climax as Bruce Banner's control over Starship Hulk slips, and something much worse takes the wheel. And that brings today's episode to a close, but if you like this video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. It helps us out. Other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.